What's up? It's Marvin of the Miles Ahead podcast. But today I want to give my perspective on the NBA. So let's dive into it. But first, I want to just talk about a couple of things before I get into it. So next week, I'm going to be getting my review on the Dave Benavides versus Kayla Plant fight. It's going to be a short take video. I'm going to be giving my thoughts on it. As for John Morant, I want to give my walk back on something that I want to talk about real, real briefly. So John Morant, you know, last week we all know that he was somebody who was carrying a firearm not too long ago. And I just want to give my thoughts on that again, briefly. So I recently just said that, you know, John Moran, he should not be carrying a gun and he should just have security on him. And there's nothing wrong with him having security on him. Now, I'm going to walk back that he should not be carrying a gun, especially if he's around these certain types of people and he puts himself in position to potentially be in danger. He should be carrying a gun. OK, but he should be trying to do it the right way, which is getting his gun license and also, you know, using his Second Amendment, OK, which is his constitutional right to be able to carry a gun. OK, and he should still have security on him as well. OK, he should. But again, he should have a gun. He should have a gun on him, too. OK, especially since. Again, he is putting himself in position to have to carry a gun, okay? Then he should have a gun. Now, when it comes to him putting it on his Instagram story to show it off, that is very immature and stupid, okay? We've been over this already, and it's not helping his reputation as of, as of now. It's not. And he does have to build trust back up with the NBA and also trust with his teammates, okay? So I'm not going to dive into that, but that's just my brief walk back on what I wanted to bring up. But first, I want you guys to hit the like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the channel, show your support. I have about 50 plus episodes on Anchor, Spotify, and Apple, and about 20 plus episodes on YouTube. So be on the lookout for more content and let's dive into the episode. Okay. So here are some of the topics I'm going to be talking about. It's going to be mostly about the NBA and let's dive into it. So I'm going to be giving my perspective on Michael Jordan selling the Hornets, Damian Lillard's ring culture statements. Mario Charman's statements on fearing LeBron James and him not being feared. Five players who have proved the haters wrong this year are the Bucks, the team to beat in the Eastern Conference, and who are the contenders in the Western Conference. So let's get into the episode, okay? Like I said, hit the like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the channel. Show your support. You already know. So, the first thing I'm going to be diving into is Michael Jordan selling the Hornets. Okay? So, I'm going to be reading Colin Cowherd's statements first. Okay? So, as of lately... Colin Cowherd, he has been disrespectful towards Michael Jordan. You know, he's basically trying to build up LeBron James to be considered the greatest player of all time. So he decided to give his statements and his thoughts on it. And I'm just going to be reading it real quick. So Colin Cowherd, he said he tried baseball. He failed. He tried ownership. He was awful. He tried the Wizards. It bombed. Everybody understands. Take out Scotty and Phil Jackson. This whole Michael Jordan mythology is sort of just that. So as you know, 
Colin Cowherd, you know, he's been extremely disrespectful as of lately. And I do feel like that was even worse. <laughs> okay. And that literally has nothing to do with the play of Michael Jordan at all. But he decided to take shots on other things that have to do with things that are outside of the game. Okay. So let's get into my perspective on this. So in baseball, right, he had not played baseball since he was a teenager. Okay. And when he played baseball for the minor leagues, he batted better than anybody within that minor league. Okay. He did. All right. That was impressive. And the thing is, is if you would have kept going on with his drive and his determination, plus with the athleticism that he has with the timing, he could have been great in baseball. Okay. So, so we're going to get mad at him for trying to do something that basically he retired to do because of his father passing away. You can't criticize him for that. Okay. And what's wrong with trying? Nothing. Okay. And like I said, he did bat better than that whole league. Okay. Nobody batted better than he did that year. Okay. And the next thing that he said is that he tried ownership. He was off. Was he? Was he really awful? Or was the front office off? Okay. Now, I will say this. He does take some responsibility because he did hire the GM. Okay. He did hire certain people. And, and from what I've heard is that he has not taken any front office types of responsibility in a while. Okay, he has not been picking players in a while. And when it comes to Michael Jordan, even back then, it's tough for Michael Jordan to be able to see things from a bird's eye view. Okay. I mean, when you're talking about one of the greatest of the great, he's always going to be comparing himself to them in terms of the hard work, the determination. Okay. What it takes for him to be great may not be what it takes for other players to be great, okay? So when it comes to him as an elevated type of basketball player and how great that he was, he's going to be looking at the players nowadays, especially the players that play for his team, or when it comes to him evaluating talent as ants, okay? Again, he's looking at things from a bird's eye view if he was playing type of thing, okay? But like I said, he had not been in the front office, you know, running things as the GM for the Hornets in a while, okay? Now, like I said, he does take some responsibility, okay, for the GM that he did hire during the time, okay? And he did make the playoffs, okay, within, you know, his time being there. OK. He wasn't a Sacramento who had not made the playoffs until this year. OK. He was not the Knicks who have gone through so many bad issues. OK. He, they have been going through so many bad issues. Right. But at the same time, when it comes to him running a small market franchise, it's just tough. OK, now he did get some talent with LaMelo Ball and he never did get to see the chance of where he might have been going, you know, in terms of his talent. And maybe he could have elevated them more, you know, would have helped with bringing more teammates around him that are good to play with. So that could have been a factor. But as far as, you know, Michael Jordan deciding to sell the Hornets, there's nothing wrong with him selling the Hornets. Nothing wrong with it. All he did was just sell the majority share. 
Okay, he still does have a minority shirt. Okay, and he bought it most of the share for one hundred and seventy-five million dollars. It's valued now at ten times more, at one point seven billion dollars. He had Kimber Walker, and now he had Lamella Ball. So to me, I feel like, you know, Michael Jordan, he's done okay as an owner. Okay. Now, again, he can't be responsible for all these picks. Like I said, he definitely did stop picking the town. He did. So, you know, we can't give him all the responsibility, but he does deserve quite a bit responsibility, okay? And again, money-wise, this is a success for Michael Jordan. Like I said, his value at $1.7 billion, okay? He purchased it for $175 million, okay? So, and the last thing that he said that he failed at was the wizard. He was trying to buy the team, okay, that year. He was trying to buy the team of the Wizards, and he wasn't able to because A. Paulin did not want to give it to him, okay? He didn't. And, yes, he was the executive when it came to picking them, when it came to picking the players and stuff like that, but he also wasn't a bad player for the Wizards either. Okay? For his age and what he was coming back from when it came to when it comes to him not playing in such a long time, it was impressive. Okay? He played he played at age 38 to 40. Okay? And he was still averaging over 20 points on 45% shooter from the field, okay? Like Michael Jordan, he's responsible for a lot of these athletes who are getting a whole lot of endorsements, superstardom when it comes to the fans gravitating towards them and stuff like that. Like, he's responsible for a lot of that type of stuff because in 1992, he made the NBA global, okay? He was a part of the reason why the NBA went global, a huge reason, okay? And now you have players coming from Italy, uh Czechoslovakia, <laughs> you know, everybody's playing basketball now, okay? And it's a lot of players who are still eating off of Michael Jordan right now, okay? LeBron is one of them. You don't get the lifetime Nike contract without Michael Jordan. You don't. You don't. Same thing for Tiger Woods, Serena Williams. You don't get that. Michael Jordan, he was the person who made it so then other people can eat. And then on top of that, you have things like NBA game time, right? You have things like NBA TV. You have things like ESPN making basketball even bigger than it, than it ever was. I mean, Basketball now, it's on ABC, okay? It's been on ABC. And back in the day, from what I've heard is, it really was not being shown like that, okay? Especially in the 80s, when it came to Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, yes, they were beginning to bring back the NBA in terms of the popularity with those two players. But like I said, Michael Jordan, he's a huge reason for why everything started to go. 
Okay, it's the athleticism, the flair, the swag, and also the success. You put all that into one, and you get what you get. Greatness. That's what you get. So it's wrong for Colin Cowherd to say that about Michael Jordan. And like I said, when it comes to Michael Jordan, he should be respected overall, okay? Because at the end of the day, even Isaiah Thomas, he said that everybody is still eating off of Michael Jordan. It's facts. You cannot deny that stuff. All right. And Isaiah Thomas, you know, he's been going crazy on Michael Jordan in terms of, you know, disrespecting him and, you know, going at him and bringing up things from the past that he can't get over. But he still did not take that piece away from him. So like I said, it's disrespectful for Colin Cowherd to say that. And you know, normally Colin Cowherd, he does have good takes, but I just didn't like this one. So that's my perspective on that. So let's dive into my next perspective, which is going to be on Damian Lillard. So I'm going to read what Damian Lillard said. Just give me a second. So Damian Lillard says he doesn't enjoy the NBA because you're expected to win and everyone is ring chasing. He thinks the regular season should just be more emphasized in terms of matter. He doesn't think that the players who don't win rings get enough credit or enough respect. He also recently just said, not too long ago, he's not interested in a rebuilding year. He's He insinuated that he doesn't want to be there anymore because they are out of the plan. Okay. So here's my perspective on it. Okay, I mean, not all of those things are word for word. I mean, some of those things are definitely paraphrased and taken from my own thoughts to be read. So, here are my thoughts. Damian Lillard, he just has to accept the fact that he took the money. Okay? He took the money. And guess what? Because he took the money, and he did not take a pay cut in any way. He basically cut himself short out of even contending for anything. First, we got to get that straight. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to say is Damian Lillard is not a top 30, 35 player all time. Those types of players. They win championships. They lead teams to championships. Can we ever just accept the fact that Damian Lillard is not that great? He should not have been top 75 at all. What were the voters thinking? I mean, I could have came up with way more players who could have been top 75 than Damian Lillard. I would have gone with Manu Ginobili. Paul Gasol. I mean, Dag, you even gave me Draymond Green. But Damian Lillard, that's what you guys come up with. Damian Lillard, out of all of his years in Portland, he has only won four playoff series in his entire career. Okay? And he wants to compare himself to Steph as well. 
in terms of his ability to shoot, right? But the thing about Damian Lillard is Damian Lillard, yes, he does shoot deep threes, right? But guess what? He doesn't do the off-ball work. He's not setting screens, okay? And as a player, he's not a great playmaker as well, all right? Now, in the playoffs, yes, he does have a couple of game winners, right? But those are against teams that were not considered to be contenders, right? Now, he's not a better defender than Steph. He's not a better shooter than Steph. He's not a better scorer than Steph. He's not a better leader than Steph. When are you guys going to just accept the fact that Damian Lillard just is not that guy? Okay? He's just not that guy. And he's fooling you guys by making it seem like he wants to win the championship and he's loyal to the soil. No, he took the money and that's what he's loyal to. There's nothing wrong with that. Just stop spewing it all over, you know, social media and also going on interviews talking about it. Bro, you're not that guy. You're not Kawhi Leonard. You're not LeBron James. You are not KD. You're not Steph. You're not Giannis. Okay? That has been Damian Lillard's whole career, okay? You know what he is? He's Piccolo. He's the broccoli. He's the macaroni and cheese. He's not the steak, okay? He's not the chicken, all right? He's the side character. That is Damian Lillard. That's been his whole career, okay? That's been him. All right. Now, now guess what? Now you see Steph or whatever at this point in the season, right? Just recently, he just beat the Dallas Mavericks and the, the Sixers recently. Okay. He beat the Sixers last night, right? But the thing is, is he never said that he never said at any point throughout all the injuries, throughout all of the the back and forth with Andrew Wiggins and also without having Gary, Gary Payton, having issues with winning records on the road, all that type of stuff. He never said that I'm not doing this for a championship. He never said that. Not one time. It's about the championship at the end of the day. Now, guess what? Yes. Yes, there are players who are great. And guess what? They, they never did win the championship. That is true. That is definitely true. But guess what? Those players who are great and they never won a championship, they are respected a whole lot more than you are. You want to know why? Because they were at least great enough to be in contention every year to at least be able to win a championship. Okay, unlike Damian Lillard, who is not as great as people want to make him out to be. What Damian Lillard is, he is not a superstar. He's just a star player, okay, who brings, you know, a certain amount of great play, not in the playoffs, but he brings great play in the regular season, okay? And not only does he bring great play, he brings, you know, fans to want to see him and 
You know, he's exciting to watch. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? But he's not Clyde Drexler, who's going to bring his team to back-to-back -back finals. He's not going to do that. He's not a John Stockton and a Carl Malone. He's not Gary Payton. He's not Patrick Ewing. All right? He's not Steve Nash, who goes to four conference finals. He's not a Chris Paul, who's going to bring his team to a finals or second rounds or making things close to even get two-way finals. He's just not that guy. Okay? Now, another thing that Damian will... Now, another thing that Damian Lillard is doing as well is he's trying to make people feel sorry for him. I don't feel sorry for Damian Lillard because at the end of the day, when he had the chance, he did have the chance to leave. He chose the money. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But don't complain about the fact that you have the money, right? You have the money. But guess what? They cannot afford any other types of key talent around you for you to be in contention. They can't. Okay? So if anything, be mad at yourself. Not to mention, when it comes to other players wanting to come play with you, you haven't proven one time that you're great enough to be able to receive a star level talent of player in terms of the KB or Kawhi. Not one time have you proven that. Not one time has Damian Lillard proven that. Not one time. Okay. So that's just the facts about Damian Lillard. That's my thoughts on him. Okay, and I know there's a lot of Damian Lillard fans out there, but hey, I gotta speak the truth. Okay, so that's my perspective on that. So the next thing I'm gonna touch on is LeBron James was basically recently being, you know, basically thrown shots at by his former teammate and Mario Chalmers. Okay, Mario Chalmers, he basically said that nobody feared LeBron James. Now, I do have a disagreement with that. Okay, I do think that LeBron James is a highly impactful basketball player. He definitely is one of the greatest players of all time. I have him at seven. You know, you could basically, you know, mix him up between – seven and five in my opinion okay you can't but i have my seven okay but when it comes to mario trauma statements about lebron james i don't know if you know somebody put something in his water or his drink or whatever it may be but he's definitely on something okay lebron james yes he does, you know, exude a certain amount of fear within players when playing basketball. And he definitely is a great player. I feel like all great players, they do exude a certain, certain amount of fear on other players. That's what great players do. Okay. Now, is he Michael Jordan? No, he's not. But he is LeBron James. Okay. I mean, he did take over an entire Eastern Conference. Okay. And he was dominant in the Eastern Conference. Now, yes, it may have been weak. All right. We all know that. But at the same time, he still was great. Okay. And guess what? I mean, it's just certain plays you just can't stop at their best. Okay. 
You can't stop Magic at his best. You can't stop Larry Bird at his best. All right? You can't stop Michael Jordan at his best. You can't stop Steph at his best. You can't stop Kobe. You can't stop Dr. J. You can't stop Isaiah Thomas. Okay? So, basically, when it comes to the role players of the NBA, and also, not only the role players, even some of the all-star caliber players, when it comes to greatness, of course, in a certain level, you are going to be at fear. Okay? When it comes to KD, same thing. John Havlicek, Bill Russell. I could go on and on and on. The top 30 players, 35 players, who were great at their field, okay? They were able to exude a certain amount of fear on other players, okay? Because at some point, they cannot be stopped. At some point, they are going to get that rebound. At some point, they are going to get that point or that block. That's what makes them great, okay? So that's my defense for LeBron James. Everybody who is great at what they do, they do exude a certain amount of fear. Okay? It's facts. Okay? So that's my perspective on that. All right? You cannot just make this just a Michael Jordan, a Michael Jordan thing as if, yes, Michael Jordan. We all know that Michael Jordan, yes, he definitely did dominate the 90s. We know that. But in the 80s, I wouldn't say Michael Jordan was a superstar. He was up and coming, rising to become a superstar. But at the same time, you want to know who's a superstar? It was actually Magic Johnson. It was Larry Bird. It was Isaiah Thomas at a point, right? Those guys, they were the superstars. Dr. J. Superstar. Moses Malone, superstar. It wasn't Michael Jordan in the early 80s. Okay? It just wasn't. Okay? When he became more of a superstar is when he got the MVP. Right? And also when he ended up getting the championship as well. When he ended up getting that finals experience. Yes, he was on his way. All right? I mean, wait. He was a superstar. Michael, he was a superstar, definitely. When he took the Pistons seven games, right, I would say that he was definitely right there. And then once he won his championship, you cannot say anything about him not being a superstar. Okay? But like I said, when it comes to greatness, of course, there's a level of fear because you can't stop it. So, again, that Mario Chalmers statement, it's just dumb. Okay? It's dumb. So that's my perspective on that. So now I'm going to move on to my next topic. So I have to look more more at my phone now because at some point I will be reading stats. So, you know, I'm going to be checking my phone a little bit. So let me just, you know, get into my next segment. Okay. So now I'm going to be talking about the five players who have proven their haters wrong this year. So let's get into that. So at number one, we have Lori Marketing. Okay. Now, in Cleveland and in Chicago, nobody did not expect what we're getting this year from Lori Marketing. Okay. Lori Marketing, now he has the whole team around him, and now he's getting the opportunity and the chance to be able to show his stardom as a star player. Okay. And he's been playing great all year long. And actually, for the season, he's been averaging 25 
points on eight rebounds on 51, 40, and 87 splits. Okay. And only 15 players have done that in terms of averaging 25 and 8 on 50 and 40 from the field. Okay. Now you have to give him his respect. I always thought that Lori Marketing was a very good talent. Okay. But he just had not had the chance to be able to prove that. Okay. Now last season he was averaging 14. And now he's definitely made that turnaround on the Utah Jazz. And he currently has this team in the play in. Okay. Now, prior to you know this season starting. Nobody nobody expected for Utah to be where it's at. And guess what? In large part, this is definitely because of them. Okay? So, and since the All-Star break, he's been averaging 30 points. And guess what else? They are definitely out of the Victor Wimbiapa sweepstakes. Okay? But, hey, they are still in playoff contention. And that's what's up for when it comes to Lori Marketing doing his thing, proving the haters wrong. And the next play I'm going to move on to is Kawhi Leonard. So Kawhi Leonard, yes, he has definitely been the face of low management. And last season, he definitely did. And last season, he definitely did go do a partial ACL to Okay. But at the same time, he also does have degenerative knee issues. Okay. Like he really does have problems with his knees. All right. So when it comes to Kawhi Leonard, we do have to, you know, criticize him, but we can't go too far on it. Okay. Like we could criticize him, you know, if he does not do well in the playoffs. Okay. But as of this season, he has been balling and he has been playing most of his games. All right. And in those games, he has been playing like prime Kawhi. All right. He's been good defensively and offensively. He has been averaging 28. Six and four. Okay, he's been a lot better as a passer. And obviously, as a mid-range shooter, he's always been a problem at that. But the percentages that he has been going on, it's been 53, 50, and 90% splits. That is greatness. All right, he's unstoppable right now. And right now, this team, they are currently at the fifth seed. So shout out to Kawhi Leonard. Definitely is proving his haters wrong. Hopefully, we will see what will happen in the playoffs. We don't want to see a healthy Kawhi Leonard. Nobody does. He's definitely going to be a problem. And he doesn't give up either. So the next player I want to highlight who has been having a great season despite the haters trying to come at him. It was actually Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson, after having two catastrophic injuries. Okay, last season, I would say that he was maybe about 75% himself. Okay. And even to this season, when it comes to him defensively, I can't really see him being that same guy. But we got to give it up to him. Okay. He has been proving the haters wrong, especially in terms of Charles Barkley. You know, he's definitely shut him up. All right. And to me, I mean, Charles Barkley, he's just a Warriors hater overall. But at the same time, you know, earlier in the season, he did have some credence. Okay. Clay Thompson, he was averaging about 17 points. Okay. But for these last two months, okay, he has been averaging 
25 points on 46% shooting from the field, 43% shooting from the three-point line, 90% shooting from the free throw line. And he guess what? He has stepped up defensively. All right. Now he's not going to be what he was in 2019 or 2015 in terms of defense, but he has definitely stepped up as a defender. Okay. And that's what's up for when it comes to Clay Thompson. You know, and and also, I mean, he's been taking better shots. Okay. Like I used to see. Clay Thompson just take the dumbest shots, all right? He used to take shots with three people on him. Now he's actually, you know, waiting his turn. And he's, um, you know, trying to play within the flow of the offense. He's been doing a lot better at that. And plus, on top of that, he's also been playmaking as well, all right? He's been passing well. And, you know, he's not you know, just being greedy as he was earlier in the season. His shot selection has gotten a lot better. So then on top of that, he has also had four 40-plus games in this season, okay? All within this January, he's definitely had a turning point since January, okay? And you just got to give it up to him. And not to mention, one of these games, I believe, he also had 12 threes. Okay? So he's back offensively, but defensively, we may never get that back. But you know what? You can't get mad at him. Okay? Clay Thompson, he's giving his all. He's trying his best. And guess what? He's definitely one of those guys who have been proving his haters wrong this year. So give it up to Klay Thompson. So the next guy is DeMontis Sabonis. So DeMontis Sabonis, he has elevated the Sacramento Kings to be second in the West. They are definitely a threat in the Western Conference. They are a problem. They are great offensively. But largely, that is because of the Monta Sabonis. Now, everybody at first, prior to this trade happening, they thought that this was a wash. Okay, that this was going to end up having them out of the playoffs again. In fact, the Sacramento Kings, they were projected to be the worst team out of both the West and the East. Okay? But currently, they are second in the West. And largely, that is due to the Sabonis and his growth. Okay? He is averaging as right now 19 and 12, which is the most in the NBA in terms of rebounds. And he's also averaging seven assists with the with the second most triple doubles. The first is Jokic. And then on top of that, he's also doing this on great splits with 62. 37 and 77 splits. Okay. And like I said, they were projected to have the worst record in the league. But hey, he's been proving everybody wrong, shutting the haters up, and making everybody know that the Sacramento Kings, they are definitely nobody to play with. But they are also being led by DeMonte Sabonis. So, you know, the Pacers and the Kings, they both won in that trade. And you got to give it up to – and you got to give it up 
to Demonte Sabonis for being able to persevere and to be able to get better throughout the season. So just give it up to him. Shout out to the Montes. So for the final player who has been proven the haters wrong this season is Julius Randle. Last year, they were 11th in the Eastern Conference, the Knicks. This year, they are the fifth seed. The fifth seed with the real chance of being able to be the Cavaliers in the first round. Okay? You got to give it up to the Knicks. And guess what? A huge factor and a huge reason for the success is actually Julius Randle. He has improved when it comes to his shot selection and also with him passing the ball as well. Okay? He's not selfish. All right? And he's making big-time buckets, and he's doing his thing. Okay? Got to give it to him. And not to mention, he's averaging 25, 10 rebounds, four assists, and also on 46% shooting from the field, 35% shooting from three, and 75% shooting from the free throw line. Look, I mean, look, at the end of the day, Knicks fans, you can't get mad at Julius Randle this season. You got to give it up to him. You got to give him his respect. He deserves it. Okay. So that's my opinion on the five players who have been able to prove the haters wrong this season. You got to give it up to them. So shout out to them for being able to persevere and being able to get through all the fan hate and through all the criticism and being able to get to the moment of where they are now and to be able to prove all the haters wrong. So shout out to them. So the next thing I'm going to move on to is, are the Bucs the team to beat in the Eastern Conference? So my answer to this question is, yes, the Bucs are the team to beat in the Eastern Conference. They are a problem. Okay? They are unstoppable. I mean, on both sides of the ball. Okay, you got Drew Holiday, who's a problem. You got Bobby Portis. Who is a problem, okay? And you got Brooke Lopez as well, Pat Connaughton. I mean, you got quality role players and Chris Middleton back, okay? So it's just been a huge issue with the Bucks when it comes to them being able to be guarded and also when it comes to Giannis's growth as a basketball player. Okay, he's an he's an MVP contention again. He's been great defensively, and he's also been great offensively as well. Okay, he's been able to take better shots, and he's also been able to pass the ball better. So you got to give it to him. Okay, he's been great this season. Okay, and as far as any team being able to stop them this season from getting back to the finals. I can't see it, okay? Boston, I feel like they have heart problems, okay? When it comes to Jason Tatum, he doesn't have the heart. He just doesn't. Now, Jalen Brown, he's the better basketball player for when it comes to having the intangibles, okay? He has the leadership quality, that never say die type of mentality. But Jason Tatum, he doesn't. Okay, but Jason Tatum, he does have a better handle than Jalen Brown does. And to this day, Jason Tatum, he still has problems with making layups. Okay, and their coach, he still has problems with being able to get this team to be able to act right defensively. Okay, now offensively, they can still play, but defensively, they have problems. Okay, 
Now, I can't see them being able to to get to the finals this year. I just can't see it. Uh, now, as for the Sixers, on the other hand, it's the same thing. They have choke problems. Okay? Now, can Joel Embiid be able to get past the choking of Doc Rivers? You know, with him not being able to make adjustments. And also, can James Harden be able to make better decisions with the basketball in the key moments in the playoffs? I'm not so sure about that. Okay. To me, their best performer in the clutch is actually Tyrese Maxey. He's somebody who doesn't know when to give up. He is a problem, okay? But as for Joel Embiid, is he going to have any stomach aches? We don't know what's going to happen to Joel Embiid until the playoffs start, okay? So I'm definitely expecting for Joel Embiid to be competitive, but is he going to win? We do know that Joel Embiid definitely does have issues with being gassed out. Okay, he has issues with his conditioning. So we'll see what happens in this season. Okay. But in my opinion, I'm going to have to say that the Bucs are still the team to be in the Eastern Conference. Okay. So that's my perspective on the Bucs and where they are and how good they are. I do think that I do believe that they definitely do have a chance of winning the championship this year, for sure. Okay, and this all depends on the determination of Giannis and also how great do the team gels together in the postseason. Okay. Because in the playoffs, it's where Make your fame, okay? It's where legacies are made, okay? It's facts. It's where legacies are made, all right? So that's where the truth is. And that's my perspective on the Bucks. So the next topic I'm going to be giving my perspective on is the Western Conference, who are the contenders, in my opinion? So I'm going to be looking at my phone real quick to, to see who I believe are contenders, okay? So in my opinion, I think that the Grizzlies are a contender, okay? I think they're a contender because of not necessarily John Moran, but I would say the greatness of Jared Jackson Jr., okay? He has great – he has gotten great defensively, all right? I believe that he definitely does deserve to get the Defensive Player of the Year award. Okay, and it's because of him that they have been where they are, which is now second in the West. Okay, and you got to give it to him. All right, they have been on fire as of lately, and mostly that's because of him. Okay, he has been, you know, dialing it down when it comes to him being able to be in consistent foul trouble. He's been good at not being at, being in foul trouble anymore, okay? He's been everywhere in terms of disrupting plays and getting blocks and steals. Like, he's definitely been a problem, okay? And to me, I think that he actually is their best player, okay? I feel like the team goes as far as he goes, okay? And... Yes, they definitely do hold a lot of trash talk within them. But, hey, 
I could definitely see them being able to potentially get to the finals. It is possible. I would not be shocked. Okay. And the next team that I see as a contender is actually the Kings. I think the Kings are a contender too. Okay. They definitely do present a lot of issues when it comes to offense. But defensively, I do believe that they are going to be having some issues there. Okay. But offensively, they are definitely a tough out. Okay. I do feel like it's definitely going to be tough because when teams die down and they really do make the offense slow down, it's all about who is going to be able to step up in those moments. Okay. Now, I do think that they are a contender because they could get hot. Okay, and I do think they and and I do believe they could potentially upset somebody. Okay, but do I think that they can lose? Yes, they can. Okay, but it also is their first time being in the playoffs as well, so they could lack they could be lacking in experience. Okay, but I'll probably say they are probably on the bottom tier of contender in terms of scare. Okay, so the next contender, in my opinion, is definitely the Clippers. Okay, I understand that they lost Paul George, but they still have Kawhi Leonard. And as long as they decide to Keep Russell Westbrook's minutes at a minimum. There's no reason why they should not be able to be a problem. Okay? Now, I don't know what they were thinking when it came to them deciding to get Russell Westbrook. I do feel like that wasn't smart. And I do feel like, yes, he has been good in spurts in the regular season. But come playoff time, when it comes to him being able to make proper adjustments in his mind and when it comes to him being able to die down the pace I don't know if he's going to be able to do the right thing but when it comes to Kawhi Leonard he's somebody who elevated a team to being able to be exactly where they need to be okay so to me I do expect for Ty Lu to make an adjustment for when it comes to the amount of minutes that Russell Westbrook will be getting in the playoffs. Yes, he is starting, but at the end of the day, I do think that the only way that they're going to win is if Kawhi Leonard wills them to win. All right, they do have quality players with them and stuff like that, so I could definitely see them being a problem still. So for the next team that I think is still a contender, but it all depends on the health of Kevin Durant, okay? If Kevin Durant comes in next week and he's able to, you know, battle through it and still play on the level that he was playing prior to him getting injured, he's a problem, okay? He's unstoppable at his best, all right? They're definitely a contender as well, all right? And when it comes to the experience, they do have experience, all right? That is good for them when it comes to them knowing what it's like to lose and knowing what it's like to choke. I do feel like that matters. So the question is, can Kevin Durant be able to get through and persevere through all of those issues and all of those situations and triumph and be able to elevate this team to get to the finals. We don't know, but they are a contender in my book. And the final team that I believe that is a contender is the Warriors. 
Okay, you cannot count them out. Okay, they have experience. Okay, they have great play as Steph. Okay, they have it all. All right, and they're gonna get Gary Payton the second back on Sunday with the Timberwolves, and I'm definitely expecting for him to make an impact come playoff time. All right, he's a great defender. Okay, and he has great high basketball IQ when it comes to situational type of events. Okay, he knows when to go for a rebound and he knows when to cut. He knows when to shoot. I mean, he knows it all in terms of doing things, the little things to help teams win championships. So he's a great role player. Now, as far as the availability of Andrew Wiggins, we don't know. But at the same time, when it comes to the experience of this team and then being able to, you know, come together as a whole, you can expect for them to be able to make some noise. You cannot count this team out, okay? Yes, they have had issues on the road, but on the road in the playoffs, they are another issue. They are another problem, okay? Like when Clay Thompson, Steph, and Draymond are all healthy and they're all on the team, they are undefeated. Undefeated. So you got to give them, you know, their respect. Okay, and then you have, you know, Moses Moody, who's playing well. You got Jordan Poole, who is becoming a much better player as of late, making better decisions, knowing when to shoot, knowing when not to shoot. Okay, he's been stopping with the boneheaded plays that he used to do. Okay, so to me, they're always going to be a contender. Okay, you cannot count this team out. And then you also have Steve Kerr, okay, who is not a rookie when it comes to coaching, all right? He knows the X's and O's, all right? And he knows which buttons to push in the playoffs. Now, the regular season, definitely understandable, okay? There's some players on there who have been missing. There's been some players on there who have been, you know, just – Going through injury, going through injuries, okay. But when it comes to the Warriors, you can't count them out. So that's my perspective on who I believe are the contenders. I just want to throw some little shots at the Dallas Mavericks real quick. The Dallas Mavericks, they are complainers, okay, complainers. All right. To me, I don't think that they will ever be where they want to be if Luca is complaining on every play. All right? It's just the fact. All right? And, yes, they did get Kyrie Irving. And he has been good offensively. But defensively, they took a hit. They did. All right? Now, I do think they do still have a shot of getting, in the, of, of getting into the play-in. They still do. But will they be a problem? No, they will not. They won't. All right. So that's my perspective on who I believe are the contenders in the Western Conference. And that is it on this episode. And have a great rest of your weekend. And remember, let's not be inches, feet, meters, nor yards. Let's be miles ahead. Have a good one.